church school lesson dated. This meeting is being recorded. Good evening and welcome to our church school for this Tuesday evening, March 1st, 2022. The lesson this morning, or this evening rather, we'll focus on from February 27, 2022. And the subject that we will be discussing this evening is serving a just God. We began by singing a song, followed by prayer, and followed by the reading of the lesson text for the evening. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him deep within. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real, for I can feel Him deep within. Yes, God is real, He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has watched and made me whole. His love for me, love for me, is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Some folk may die. Some folk may scorn, all can desert and leave me alone. But as for me, I take the part, for God is real and I can feel him in my heart. Yes, yes, God is real. He's real in my soul, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has watched and made me whole. His love for me is like to go. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. <clears throat> Amen. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing. That God is real. For I can feel him deep within. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father, we come now realizing that thou art God and beside thee, there is none other. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you already bestowed upon us. We thank you yet again for touching us yet again with a finger of your divine love and causing something to happen. We had movement in our body. And so we thank you for, for having movement. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you that you allowed our eyes to open again to see familiar surroundings. You allowed us to move around in our homes and prepare ourselves yet again to prepare for our daily activity. You allowed us to clothe ourselves, to feed ourselves, to leave our home and prepare to go to our vocation, our job. Then, oh God, we pray for those who are sick, we lift up and pray for one of our dear members, Sister Mary Brown, better known as Miss Pete, who is now hospitalized. And we pray, oh God, that you're touching now with a finger of your divine love. Touch Sister Barbara and the family. Let them know that God is still in charge. Be not dismayed, 
whatever time God will. God will take care of you. And then, oh God, we pray for the St. Luke body as a whole. All our members, both individually and collectively, you know who they are. So touch them in a mighty way. Then, oh God, we pray for those who are homeless, those who have nowhere to lay their head. We pray for the unconcerned, the careless. Pray for those who are in our institutions, our, our correctional institutions, our juveniles, at Lee County Detention Center, Lee County Youth Development Center, detention area. We pray, oh God, for our teachers. We pray, oh God, for our healthcare workers who have been working tirelessly to help those who are in the hospital. So touch them in a mighty way. And then, oh God, we pray for our leadership, our pastor, Reverend Monique Summers and Brother Perry. We pray, oh God, for our presiding elder, Dr. Leticia Wofford and Brother Tom. We pray, oh God, for our presiding prelate, Bishop Harris C. Wright and Reverend Sarita Moon C. Wright. Touch them in a mighty way, oh Heavenly Father. And then, oh God, we pray for our nation. We pray for our citizens in Ukraine who are going through a terrible act of Russia invading their land without any probable cause. Lord, we pray for those who reside there in Ukraine. We pray for the United States of America. We pray for our cities all over this land. We pray for our mayors and our city council persons, our governor. And we pray, oh God, for our president as he prepares to deliver the State of the Union. We pray, oh God, that you protect them in a mighty way that he may impart words of encouragement for our land that we call America. And then we just pray, oh God, that you would just teach us how to love one another. Teach us how to pray for one another. Teach us how to be more loving and kind. And we be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. Been so good. I just want to thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so kind. You've been so merciful. So we thank you. Amen. You brought us through dangers seen and unseen. You brought us from a mighty long way. You brought us from two rooms chatting to a three bedroom home. So we thank you. We thank you. Amen. Thank you for you've been so good to us. My God can do anything because he has the power to do what no, no other power can do. My God can do anything. Amen. We praise God for whom all our blessings flow as we prepare to study our lesson, our the last lesson of this quarter uh, entitled Serving a Just God. And the scriptural lesson can be found in the book of Job, the 42nd chapter, and the focal scripture is in Job 42nd chapter, verses 1 through 6, and verses 10 through 17. And the key verse reads thusly, therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, 
which I did not know. Job the 42nd chapter and the third verse. With them, I read the lesson text from the King James Version of the Bible. And it read thusly. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that had a counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understand not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verses 10 through 17 reads as follows. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had had before. Then came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they demoned him and comforted him all over the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter in a joke more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Kazia, and the name of the third Karen Hoppish. And in all the land where the women found so fair as his daughter of Job and their father gave them inheritance, including among their brethren. After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his prophetic and divine word. Amen. Amen. Job continually called God and he wanted to understand why catastrophes befell him. Even when his wife suggested he curse God and when no relief was in sight, Job consistently asked God why these things happened. After Job's friends completed their comments, God spoke to Job. Job listened and heard of God's wisdom, magnificence, and awesomeness displayed daily in the world God spoke into existence. Amen. And Job continually, amen, call God. Because last week's lesson, which we were not able to do, uh, we would know uh, that Job had lost quite a bit. He had suffered quite a bit. He lost his children, all his cattle, and his friends, uh, his three friends who came to speak with him, uh, they said that the reason that you are going through this turmoil and, and through this great misfortune because you have sinned. But they were not right in their presumption. They presumed that the reason he was looking so terribly with balls all over his body because he had sinned. Because I believe it said that Joe was a upright and blameless person who lived a righteous life and it was not because he had sinned but the three friends uh they just really uh made matters worse uh during his time of loss sometimes it's best to remain silent if you don't know what to say uh and so instead of being of comfort uh the friend were more of an attack rather than comfort. And so they were really accusing Job of being guilty of sin. Amen. Amen. 
but Job was an upright and righteous man. And that's the first verse, amen, in our lesson text tells us, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do, amen, everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. No thought can be withholden from thee. Amen. I know that thou can, and no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hide counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. Wherefore I pour myself and repent in dust and ashes. So during all of Job's trouble, he steadfastly held up being innocent of any sin that caused his suffering. Amen. And so we see here in the first verse, after Job's three friends, amen, uh, they are so-called counseling of Job. And then Elihu, he addressed the four of them, and the Lord spoke to Job directly out of the whirlwind. And after the Lord finished rebuking him, our first verse said, then Job answered the Lord and said, and in his first response, he admitted he was vile and that he couldn't answer God's question. He couldn't explain that God was the creator of all things that were good and perfect. He created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in the midst, and he rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And then verse two, he said, I know that thou can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. The Lord was not trying to embarrass or belittle Job for his answer. The Lord's intent was to show Job just how little he knew about God's plan and purposes. So I believe it's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he will do for you. With all wide open, it's no secret what God can do. And so God had challenged other 10, where was he when he created the universe? Amen. And Job said to God, I know that I can do everything. Amen. Because the son I just seen at the opening, yes, God is real, for I can feel him deep within. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Amen. So God has unlimited power. My God can do anything because he has the power to do anything. Amen. And so God is so powerful that no one or anything can prevent or stop his plan. And, the, and it's really sometimes we find such and such a pit of despair and depression that we wonder how God could ever free us. You know, amen. What would it take for us to truly believe that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Sometimes we have to see it. We are skeptic. We have to see it to believe it. We have to see him to turn water to wine. We have to see him to pull a coin out of a fish's mouth. Uh, we have to see him to raise the dead. We have to see the miracles that took place. Amen. But Joe was not sure how and when God would change his circumstance, but we know that God in his own time will change your circumstances your plight, your despair. Uh, you will be blessed fourfold, as we will see later that he was blessed tremendously. And then Job's admission in this verse, it said, Job continues to say, who is he that had a counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. So he asked the same question, he repeated that question. He said, who is it that obscured my plan without knowledge? And so Job could not answer because he had the wrong impression, presumption about God. You know, God doesn't operate according to our plan. He operates until his master's plan, the living God, you know. Uh, he said, I have, in other words, Job said to the Lord, I have uttered that I understood not 
things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Amen. So if you know you're wrong, you ought to admit that you have uttered something that was out of line, that was wrong. Amen. In verse 4, here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. So he was demanding that Job answer the question that he posed to him. And he kept repeating these same words uh, to find out that he know the answer. And he could not answer those questions that God had posed to him. And, and so the Lord didn't honor Job's request because he, at the time, it, but, but he didn't chastise him for his lack of understanding. But Job wanted God to declare thou unto me or instruct him more. And so Job, he, he uh, showed humility in verse 5. I had heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Amen. So he had heard about the Lord from other people. And, and he, you know, he wasn't quite sure about the creation because he wasn't there when the Lord created the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that in the middle. He wasn't there. I wasn't there. You wasn't there. But God, he just spoke it into existence when he said, I'll create the, the trees, the ox, the ox and the cattle and, and all the animals that will be creeping upon the earth and the sea. Uh, he just spoke the word and it came to fruition. Amen. And so, yes, God is real. He's real. And then that verse six. Wherefore I pour myself and repent in dust and ashes. So Job said, I despise myself. I'm ashamed of those statements that I made to you, accusing God of not judging the wicked. But it's a song that says, the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. All of the saints of the ages shall sit at his feet and be blessed. And we come upon Ash Wednesday uh, where the time of fasting and praying and we approach uh, Easter Sunday and, and we some of us will do things, maybe uh, abstain from doing certain things for a period of time in reverence and humility to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so Job repented, which means he had to turn the mind because he had a self-righteous attitude toward God when he received no answer for him concerning why was he suffering? Why was I going to, why did I lose my my children, my ten children? Why did I lose my cattle, my oxen? You know, why did I lose all this? And so uh, the ash heap on which Joseph had been sitting was now changed from a Refuge for an outcast and also for a repentant sinner. The God may not choose to appear to us in a spectacular way, but He will, in His own time, take care of us. Uh, be not dismayed, whatever time God will take care of you. And so, the first question I would ask What does nature teach you about God? What does this beautiful universe? that we dwell in teach us about our God. Uh, Sister Monaghan or someone on the line. Now, what do you say, Greg? Now, repeat uh, this question. Uh, what does nature teach us about God? What does nature? Oh, okay. You, you know, about a couple weeks ago, we looked out. And all trees looked like they were dead, and they didn't have no life in them. They just looked like sticks. But the next two or three days, you could look up and see the green buds. And that's, then you know there is some, a God somewhere that can do those things, you know. You look uh, at yeah. your flower. Your flowers look dead and everything, your trees and your, your trees look like your sticks up there. But in a few days, because I was looking out, one week I was looking out and they looked like 
some dead sticks, and the next week you could see the green buds when the sun was shining. So you know there is a God somewhere. Amen. There must be a God somewhere, you know, uh, because he created the heavens and the earth, the seas, all the living creatures, that the creeping things that crawl, and all the animals. And, and uh, so we know that nature teaches us that God is a powerful God. My God can do anything. There's nothing that God can do. Now, we are limited in our ability, but there's nothing that God, our God cannot do because he has no. the power to do anything. Amen. He don't need our assistance. He don't need our help. So when we are going through our trials and tribulations, we're going, we're going through bereavement, uh, God will take care. He may not come when you want to, but he'll come on, he's coming on time. He's an on time God. Amen. He may not come when you want, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. He, you may say, well, Lord, I was expecting you to come at seven o'clock. <laughs> you can't put God on, on a time. You, you know, God will come when he gets ready. You know, so that's right. Those three friends, yeah, yes, ma'am, yeah. And so those three friends, they they coming in, you know, they saw Job looking all pitiful and all those balls on his body. They couldn't hardly recognize that. Who is he? He looked pitiful. He don't lost all that he had, and they say he must have did something. He sinned, but I said, as I said earlier, Job was a blameless and upright man. I mean, he was a righteous person. Uh, and so he did not sin, and, and the fact that God rebuked him, it was because he didn't know who God was, you know. So, and he didn't chastise him for for not knowing who he was. He just told him, said, you don't, you're not aware of who I am. And so that's why I'm letting you know that I am God, and beside thee, there is none other. Amen. And so... Uh, Joe conceded that he really did not know God. So he had a preconceived notion, a stereotype, which is what a stereotype is, a preconceived notion about how a person behaves or how a person acts. Now, if I didn't know you, Sister Mung, I had a, I would have a pre preconceived notion without knowing you, uh, making a blunt statement saying, well, you are such a certain person without knowing you as the person. Get to know the person before you start presuming the person's character. Amen. So Job realized he was mistaken. God's magnificence was beyond what Job could fathom. And so Job despised and rejected uh, his presumptions about God and repented. Amen. Amen. And then verse 10, as we continue, our lesson text here. And the Lord turned the captive of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Amen. He gave him twice as much as he had before. And so these friends, they incorrectly applied God's justice to why he was suffering. They spoke as if they knew God's mind. And we don't know God's mind. Amen. And the Lord said that he was angry with them, these three friends, because you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. And so he prayed for his friend. Job's friend made the error assuming that his suffering was by some group which it was not. And we got to start making judgment about a person because God may be working in a way we don't know anything about. Amen. And because we know that before the Lord, Job tried, the Lord introduced him to Satan. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Amen. And so he, he turned his captive to Job. Amen. And gave him twice as much as he had before. Amen. Because he allowed, God allowed Satan to strike Job. And uh, Job would not curse him as a wife. Why don't you curse him? His wife, Job's wife. And we all know that Satan was proved to be a liar. Job never cursed God. 
Amen. He never cursed God. Amen. But yet and still, you, we, we often heard the term, you got to have the patience of Job. Now, uh, Sister Mike, what does that mean to you, the patience of Job? What does that mean? You got to have the patience of Job. Because uh, all of his friends came and came to see him, and they wanted him to protect God, and he didn't. He uh, he he waited on God till God came to take care of him. What he's going to do for him? Even yeah. his wife asked him to, you know, forsake him, but he he didn't. He just waited. Until he came, he, you in that reason we have to wait until he comes. Amen. May that wait upon the Lord shall renew that strength. They shall mount up with wings of the eagle. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and not be and not weary. Amen. They that wait, you gotta wait. You gotta be patient. Some of us so antsy. Amen. We okay. It's been an hour, God. I mean, when you come in, you know, we can't question God's timing. Amen. Mm -hmm. we, be going to, we can't do that. That's that's That would be incorrect on our part. God uh -huh. would, would do, you know, he will come in when he think it's, it's time to come into your situation, your your trial, your, your trouble, your despair. And that's what he did with Brother Joel. Because, as I say, he was a blameless and upright man. He, he was not a wicked person. He was a kind-hearted and, and, and a, 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 a man of God, amen. But he had suffered his love, and he. And so, let me just ask this question: Is it a sin to question God about calamities that happen to us, misfortune? For instance, the death of a loved one. Is it is it a sin to question God about the death of our loved one? You said what? As what, Greg? Is it, is it a sin uh, to question uh, the death of our loved one? To question God about the death of our loved one or our misfortune that we incurred? Is it a sin to question God in that instance? In that? I don't know if a sin, but you could You shouldn't question God what He does. You, you should be Christian enough. No. That God does all things. Amen. And, and he, he does them and he, he do it in his time, not in your time. Not when you get ready. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, and it's not a sin really to question God because we all have questions. Why, why God, you know? Why my brother? Why my sister? You know, why did you take? You know, we and it's not a sin to question God, uh, uh, because you know we we all have suffered loss. Uh, I have certainly suffered tremendous loss. Uh, I didn't question God when He took my mother, my sister, uh, my cousin, who was like a brother. I, yes, it was pretty rough because we were very close. And I didn't question God, but uh, certainly it's hard to get to that acceptance, the acceptance stage of death, you know, that final stage where we have denial, we have to be angry. Uh, we go through a de period of depression, and then that final stage of, of acceptance, a lot of us are still not there uh, as far as accepting the death of our loved one. Uh, but he never make a mistake, and so we we have to trust God will, will take care of us. As it says, earth has no sorrow that heaven uh, cannot heal. Amen. And so it is not a sin to question God because we all ask why. That's our first, why, you know, and it's, that's not a sin to, and that's not out of ignorance either that we would question God. But Job, you know, he was not without sin himself because out of ignorance he too said some incorrect things about God. You know, he was afflicted. Yeah, he, he still said some incorrect things about God. But Job still loved those three friends, you know, because you know, charity 
uh, love shall cover a multitude of sin. And so God restored Job physically and materially. His family members that deserted him came and comforted him. And they showed amazing generosity. Amen. They showed amazing generosity. He came there, all his brethren, verse 11, all his sisters, and all that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. Amen. And all his family. And God, and God gave Job twice as much as he had had before when he had plenty. Amen. He enjoyed renewed fellowship with his kinfolk. You know, most of the time we don't, you don't usually see your kinfolk till uh, something happens like a death. Everybody comes and you gather at the house and you, you conversate, you, you know, you uh, reminisce about old time. And then when the funeral is over, People stop calling. I mean, everything just ceases <laughs> once you uh, inter bury your loved one. When the funeral is over, you don't hear, you don't hardly hear anything else after the funeral is over. But Joel, careful, they came and and comforted him and gave him a piece of money and a year and a gold. And and all his brothers and all had been of his acquaintance were in the house eating bread. Amen. Well, we see that God had turned the captive of Job around. Uh, his brothers and sisters and all his acquaintances came to fellowship with him. And, and so what a fellowship, what a joy divine that if we would just lean on his everlasting arm. So it's good for our kinfolk to get along with each other. We don't need to have strife and turmoil uh, at the funeral, uh, you know, uh, try to get along with our kinfolk. Uh, and, and when we offer words of sympathy, you know, and, and a lot of times we will say, our child was just his time or her time to go. Uh, and so let me just ask this question. What is the appropriate thing to say? I don't know if you would phrase it that way. When someone has lost a loved one, what would be the proper thing to say when you're comforting uh, a friend who has lost a loved one. Well, you just give them condolence and tell them you're going to pray for them and, and all of that. Yes, you, they don't, you don't tell people it was his time, you know, because only one person know whose time is it is time to go. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you know, we uh this tell uh my prayers are with you. You have my sincere condolences. I'm praying for you. You know, those are appropriate things to say. Uh, to, mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are very appropriate, you know. Uh my prayers are with you. Is there anything I can do uh, to for you? You know, maybe I'm running errands or something uh, that you would want me to do. You know, but to say that, uh, well, your child, well, that's her time to go. Oh, you got, she's not suffering. He's not suffering any longer. You know. Uh, so I, I think the best, and best thing you probably say is you have my, simply my condolences. You know, when you go on a person's uh, tribute wall, you know, whether it's Harris funeral home or Peterson, and a person that you know, when you go on that tribute wall, uh, certainly you, were, you wouldn't write that on the tribute wall that was just that time, <laughs> you know. Uh, you say, I stand my deepest sympathies or what, however you want to phrase it, because they do read those before they even allow them to be uh, on the uh, person's tribute page. They screen them, in other words, to make sure it's appropriate to post. So we have to be careful, you know, when we are dealing with people who are going through bereavement, it's, you know, and, and let's, let's be sympathetic and kind and compassionate toward the person who has suffered 
the lost. Amen. And then verse 12, the Lord, my, my, blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, my, my, and 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she asses. He also, verse 13, had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first, Jemima, and the name of the second, Keziah, and the name of the third, Karen Hopper. Amen. And so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Can you imagine someone having 14,000 sheep, Sister Mike, and 6,000 camels? And a thousand your boxing. And I just wonder where did he did he have that much land that he could keep out? Oh my goodness. That more animal that you would see in a zoo. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. So you can see that the Lord would multiply where you are fourfold. Now we note that he had 10 children and 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 Certainly, he had seven sons and three daughters. Amen. And they were all a blessing to him. Because uh, Job had the seven sons and three daughters. But all the children were killed in a windstorm. My, my. But his wife was blessed, him and his wife were blessed to have the same number of children. After his days of suffering, to have 10 children, he lost 10, but he gained 10. Amen. Amen. And so we don't know why the daughter's name is a list and the sons are not. So, Sister Mike, do you, uh, do you know why they listed the daughter's name and not the sons? Is they listed the son's name and not the daughter's? They listed the daughter's name, but not the son's name. Oh, I, I, why? Yeah, now, I wonder I, why. I read that. Because he had seven sons. Amen. And uh, they didn't uh, list the son's name, but he list, they listed the names of the daughter, or uh, Jemima, mm -hmm. yeah, and Kazia, and then the third daughter, Karen Hopper. But they didn't list the, the names of the seven sons that the Lord blessed them with. You know, so I don't know. Uh, why they didn't miss the son, but anyway, Joe's daughter was named in the previous verse, yeah, but not his son, yeah. But don't and you so, think, don't yeah. you think that if he blessed him with all the animals and that he had, that he enlarged his, his space of land where he was going to put them? Yeah, in largest territory. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would assume that he did. He would have to, because you look, if you count the number of uh, 14,000 sheep, 6,000 mm -hmm. camels, that's 20,000, and then 1,000 yoga of oxen, that's 21,000, mm -hmm. and 1,000 sheep, that's 22,000 animals. So you would have to yeah. have a vast he had, to be able yeah, he had to enlarge his 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 coast, his land if he had land. He had to enlarge it so he could take care of all those animals. Yeah. But that's that's to my kind, that is twenty two thousand animals that the that the Lord said blessed the latter end of Job more than so he had more uh, in the latter end than he had at the beginning. I'm assuming here, you know. Yeah. That the animal were concerned. Mm -hmm. The children, I mean, he didn't get 10 more children. He didn't get 20 children. He got the 10 that he lost in the world. Yeah, world. that's right. Yeah, so God is <laughs> good. Yes, yes. Yeah. But they said you were thinking the about the sons. Maybe all the sons were killed in the whirlwind. Reason they we uh, that's that's surmising, and I shouldn't do that. 
because I don't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and uh, but he did say the women, that his daughters were beautiful women, and the father gave them inheritance among their brethren. And we know that Job lived, you know, either before or during the days of the patriarch that we know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, mm -hmm. So the Missouri law said that daughters could only have their father's inheritance if there were no son and the father had died. You know, so they could only have the father's inheritance if there were no son. But there were some sons in this instance. And uh -huh. father, yeah. And since Joe was not dead and he had a son, it may have been customary that the both the daughters and the son were given an inheritance. Yeah, and that's so, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because he did have sons, uh, the, the seven, amen, the sons and the daughters, the seven sons and the three daughters, amen. So we see that God is good. Uh, All the time. Yes, yeah, yeah. He'll open up the window and pull you out of blessing. Pull you out of blessing that you wouldn't have room for. Amen. He, he, he pulled out a blessing on Brother Jacob. But God, our God is a just God. He's He's not cruel. He's not uh, a God that will punish us for no reason. Uh, he knows just how much we can bear because we are our heavenly Father's children. He knows. He knows how much, Sister Mindin, you can bear. Yeah. I can bear. He knows how much all of God's children can bear. He wants That's to right. You. Amen. And so, just be. Be assured that God, he, he, he won't put any more on you than you can have. You know, and some folks might be moaning the fact that, Lord, have mercy. When am I going to get out this this pit? You know, it sometimes seems like we're in the, in the muck and the mire. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just hold on, just a little while long, everything will be all right. Just hold on. Yes, it just will. While, just a little while longer, and everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. And everything will be all right. You just got to hold on. And then verse 16. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his son and his son's son, even four generations. And so we, it's a debate whether he lived to be 140 years old. But the text, he lived an additional 140 years, which allowed him to see his son and his son's son, even for a generation. So he, long, he lived longer to see his, grand, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and his great-great-grandchildren. So it says in some with, with long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Amen. And so the, although we know that the children were not double like his livestock, yet, amen, uh, the children's children, which the psalmist said, are the crown of old men. They were more than double. And so Job died being old, but full of days. Amen. Oh, he, amen. Joel was a good example of Psalm 37, 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. What a way to go. Amen. Amen. And so in conclusion, gossiping behind a person's back as well as offering false advice can do much damage. You must be careful about assuming we know what God is doing in another person's life. We may try to help people in that walk with the Lord with good intention, but it's very easy to give our opinion about why this or that happened. We must recognize that we cannot understand the ways of God in our own life, much less in the lives of others. But God revealed himself to Job in a life-changing way. He demonstrated to Job that he is sovereign and not subject to the judgment of man. Job repented of his accusations of God and was able to gain a new perspective about him. So when we see him as he is, we are better able to cope with the trial that we face. When you know who he is, 
you'll be better able to cope with the trial that you're going through. Because that song, you might hear sometimes, oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Amen. 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 Job, Job lived a beautiful life. Yes, he suffered. He lost all, this, all he had. Amen. Uh, his friend were not much help. But God is still, he's a good God. He's an on time God. Amen. So, amen. Amen. So, let me ask you this question What difference do your prayers make in other people's lives? What difference do your prayers make in other people's lives? Do you think your prayers make a difference in someone else's life? I hope they do. That's when I pray for them, I want the Lord to bless them as well as me. Amen. Amen. And and, and, and we must not only pray for ourselves, but we must pray for others, pray on behalf of others, those who are going yeah. through. Amen. Uh, uh, lift up other people. And, and as I mentioned in the prayer, uh, I, I know someone said a text that S uh, Sister Brown was in the hospital, and uh, we certainly praying for her to get better. I don't know her condition. Uh, do you know Sister Monica? How she's doing? Uh, uh, the last I heard, she was getting better. Well, well good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we lift up. Amen. Our beloved member. We pray that she gets stronger and stronger. Amen. Amen. One of our mothers of the church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, we certainly, this Black History, uh, this is March 1st, but certainly uh, Black Americans, as we look at Sankofa moment, we were probably 40 acres on a mule. And we're still waiting on it, Sister Mike. <laughs> we're still I, I waiting on think, a reparation. I don't think we're going to get it. You don't think so? No. We're still, we still waiting on those reparations that apology for slavery. We're still waiting on it. Mm, but I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to get that. And so we, you don't think we're gonna get restitution for this? Uh, it may not be for the acres of the mule, but a debt is old, as it says uh, here in number five, six, and seven. Uh, I, you know, I don't uh, think we'll get a, a apology either. Okay, yeah, and uh, but I think we come a long way as African Americans. Uh, we uh, said we. Uh, Thoughtful and and uh, have hope that our first black Supreme Court justice, who is a woman of color, who is an uh -huh. AME, I believe she's in the second district, Episcopal district, uh, will be sitting on the court. Hopefully, around April or May of this year, uh, she will be confirmed uh, swiftly. She's very well educated, very knowledgeable young lady. I think, and she spoke well at her acceptance of the nomination. I saw that, and she's a very eloquent speaker. Uh, and I think she will serve a long time. She's only 51, so she can serve 30 years on the court if the Lord blesses the live to be 81. Yeah, that's and so, right. And so, so we praise God and that and thank our president for saying that he was he committed to selecting a woman of color. To serve on our nation's highest court, the United mm -hmm. States Supreme Court. So we pray for her, Amen. As she prepared to meet with the senators and then prepare to appear before the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, to present her case, Amen. So we pray that all will go well. And if it takes a time to get her on the, on the uh, court, our Vice President has that ultimate vote. To break yeah. the tie. So we, uh, yeah, so thank God we have her. She's made history as well, been our first 
woman of color and an Asian woman at that be our vice president of these United States of America. Amen. 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 And uh, I see this question, and it's an interesting question here. What are the advantages and disadvantages of house churches? You remember when they had church and houses, but I don't. <laughs> what are the advantages of having church at your home? I, I saw that too, but I don't remember people having church at home. Okay. Now, I remember my grandmother had a missionary meeting. Yeah, home. but. Yeah, but I don't, having church. Yeah. Yeah, I've never known them to have church at houses. I, I, I don't know. They could have before. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I didn't, when I saw that, I I'm not familiar with uh, churches that are held in home, but I, I think some probably non-denominational, you know, like maybe the apostolic, or you know, they some they might have churches in home, and but I'm not sure uh, how prevalent that is as far as. Uh, it's bad. I'm, it's, I'm certain it's a disadvantage and advantage of doing anything. Uh, so, uh, but we, we know that church is not going to have necessarily be in a building. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but that's an interesting question. And then we look at the life application of the lesson. We know that Job was chosen because he was righteous. Job complained, yet God, Job heard God's voice. We know that enduring hardships can help you grow spiritually. Amen. And so, amen. That great hymn of the church, O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Amen. 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 How great thou art. So when you're going through hardship, that can help your spiritual growth. Amen. And certainly Brother Job is a testament of how a person can endure a hardship and tragedy and be blessed more blessed so wonderfully in the latter end than he was in the beginning. My, my, my. My God can do anything. Amen. Yeah. He, he's got the power. Amen. He's got the power to do anything. Amen. And if you have the faith, you know he can do anything. Amen. You got to have the faith. Amen. And believe that what God said he would do would come to fruition, you know. Uh, um, expect something marvelous to happen. Don't expect nothing going to say, well, I don't think it's going to happen. But God said it, it will happen. And so we just have to be patient. You got to have the patience of Job. Job. We got to have the patience of Job. Amen. Some of us are too antsy. We can't wait for anything. We get a, if a person, I'll be at, at your house at one o'clock. Okay, at 1 15. Where, 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 where are they at? You know, they haven't got here yet. You got to be patient. But for me, I, I always, if I say I tell, I'm picking you up at a certain time, I'm, I'm, I'm usually there on time. I'm I always having yeah. a person up front. I believe in being prompt and starting on time. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, amen. To be prompt and on time, amen. Very beautiful lesson, lessons that we had for this quarter. Amen. This one a quarter. And we'll be giving to some new lessons uh, again in Sunday. Uh, I heard that we'll probably be entering back into the, 
to the sanctuary. To, I don't know if that's going to mm-hmm. happen or not, but, but I think that's the plan for us to be have in person uh, 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 worship in a uh, church school on Sunday. Amen. Amen. And any other comments, Sister Martin, you might want to. No, I don't have. I don't have no comments. Nice lesson. <clears throat> Amen. And, and your comments were right on time. Uh, the question that I asked uh, certainly, we uh, we all have been through uh, turmoil and have had hard time, but we know that if we put our hands in His hand, God will see us through. You know. Uh, I started with Jesus, and I'm going through, you know. Uh, Amen. I start with Jesus. I'm going through, you know. Be not dismayed. Whatever the time, God will take care of you because beneath his wings, love abide. God will take care of you. We now uh, recite the church group creed, and I'll sing a closing song of invitation. Our church school creed, I believe my AME church school must grow and grow. grow. And I make it a top priority to make it so. Grow. Every member a Christian, every Christian worker, worker. every worker trained so the worker Amen. need not be ashamed. This we ask. Yes, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn of invitation, come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. Just now, oh, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, he will save you, he he will save you, he will save you. Just now, just now, oh, oh, he will save you, he will save you, just now, amen. Come to Jesus, just now, he will save you, he is able, he is willing. Come confess him, come obey him, he will hear you, he'll forgive you, he will cleanse you, Jesus loves you, and only trust him. So come to Jesus, come to Jesus, amen. Whatever you are through, you ought to get a preach of your hand and guard your heart, amen. 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 We thank you so much for joining us this evening for our church school lesson and 